Eh, buongiorno, prima di presentare gli ospiti al, al tavolo eh, voglio eh, salutare anche alcuni altri eh, eh, membri del team del film che sono presenti in sala. Il, produ il produttore Ceci Dempsey, il produttore Ed Guinea, il produttore Andrew Lowe, il produttore Lee Majday, lo sceneggiatore Tony McNamara, ehm, la costumista Sandy Powell, il sound designer Johnny Byrne e il montatore del film Yorgos Mavropasridis. Abbiamo una domanda qui. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. E adesso presento gli ospiti al tavolo. <ride> A partire da, dalla, in fondo alla, alla mia destra, Joe Alvi, uno dei protagonisti del film. Emma Stone. Yorgos Lantimos, il regista del film. Olivia Coleman. E Nicholas Hout. E poi iniziamo con una domanda. Hello, hi Yorgo. Congratulations for the film, it's great as usual. Um, it's a question about the story and the screenplay. Uh, since it was, uh, it's the first time it was not initiated by your uh, frequent collaborator, Ephthemis, and you, what drew you initially to that story? And secondly, uh, did you remix, let's say, the tone after you said okay and you agreed to do the film? Hello, yes. <laughs> so I was initially attracted to this film uh, when I came uh, across the story uh, of an originally existing, of an existing original screenplay. Um, and I got acquainted uh, with these three female um, characters, uh, which happened to be real people. Um, uh, so uh, right away I, I, I felt that It was an interesting story in its own right, uh, but also the fact that we would have the op opportunity of creating three very complex, complicated female characters uh, on film, which is something that you rarely see, uh, was immediately uh, what drew me into um, exploring this story. Um, I, I also liked the fact that it was a period film and I have, hadn't done one uh, up to this point. Um, I think doing a period film um, creates some kind of distance uh, that allows you to see certain things more clearly. Um, so those were a few of the reasons that got me uh, interested and excited about making this film. Um, and the fact that Um, I, I, it didn't come from me uh, originally, it didn't really make much, much difference during the process because I, um, we've been working on this film for nine years now until we finally got it made. So it went through a lot of um, um, variations and directions and, um, uh, but, but we always, knew that we wanted to focus on, on, on these three women and through them um, be able to convey the themes that we wanted to explore. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, this is Laura Sanchez from W Radio Colombia. My question is for Emma Stone. Uh, you uh, play this role of a woman who is not, uh, it's very observative, but not that talkative. It, it doesn't talk too much. Your expression, your face is very important in the movie. How did you feel uh, portraying this kind of role? Thank you. Um, I, well, I loved it. <laughs> um, I was, you know, a, a lot of it was kind of, I didn't really fully understand, maybe at the beginning, as we were shooting it, I, 
started to understand more just because of the way that, that Yorgos was shooting, um, that there would be more silence and more watching and observing than I had previously expected, um, which was fantastic. If I could do a whole film and never say a word and, and just get to do that, I would be very happy. <laughs> I'm sure lots of other people would be very happy too. I just stopped talking. <laughs> uh, hi, Stephen Schaefer, Boston Herald. The the uh, complex, complicated women are really uh, something in this movie. It's extraordinary performances from both of you. Can you talk about how you see these women, the sexual politics that they're involved in? Is, is Queen Anne out of her mind, uh, basically? Or is she just somebody who's uh, petulant and childlike? And uh, Emma, you know, it, this seems to be some kind of a, a breakthrough into things we've never seen you do before. So uh, perhaps the challenges of the role for both of you. Thank you. Um, oh, that's working. Uh, um, well, no, I, uh, Queen Anne was a joy to play because she, uh, you know, she sort of uh, feels everything. Uh, she's and there's the petulant child thing. It's just a, you know, a woman who is um, underconfident, I think, and doesn't know if anybody genuinely loves her or not. So it does play quite a lot with her um, state of mind and also too much power too much time on her hands. Um, uh, and I can't remember what the other bit was. I think that's now Emma. Oh, sexual politics. Um, uh, there was lots of it. And, <laughs> and that's good. And um, there is, that was sort of timeless, I suppose. That will always happen. It's as though uh, we think we invented sex, but we didn't. It's been going on for quite a long time. Um, and it was awfully fun having sex with Emma Stone. <laughs> it was really fun having sex with you, too. Thank you. Um, I, and, and your, do, mine was the, the cha did you say the challenges of the character? No, oh, she's not. <laughs> well, yeah, she's been, she's overcome a lot. She's a survivor. We sort of talked about that for two seconds once, remember? Yes. Yorgos doesn't like to talk about characters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, she, yeah, she's, she's overcome a lot. I mean, I, I loved, I loved every element of, of getting to play her. And um, in terms of the challenges, just for, for me, you know, I was the only um, American in the cast, so that was a little bit daunting, um, just in terms of trying to make sure that the uh, accent made sense and I didn't sound like the sore thumb American in the cast. Um, and, you know, the corsets. Were, were a challenge too, just because you can't breathe all day. Uh, but f as for the character, that was just that was just like Kali said. It was a sorry, Olivia said it was a joy. Uh, I, have, I have a follow up uh, for for Yorgos on this one. Yorgos, um, as, as Steve said, this is a word. I'm here, Julia, on your left. Here. Uh, I, uh, hello. Um, I have a follow-up because, as, as, as Steve said, this is a, is a word of, of women, and this is the private, you know, the loves and and, and the uh, intrigue of, of these women. But how did you balance this war with history? Because after all, Anne was a queen, and every choices that are made in the film have, have consequences on on history, on war, on power, and, on the, and you know, how did you find that that line where the two world, the, the, the historical world, and and the private world of these characters are? Um, I think it was very clear from, from the beginning that we wanted to focus uh, very much on, on, on these three women. And whatever you learned um, about the, the politics and, or most of what you learned around the politics and the war and the decisions was mainly seen through them. And we also tried to um, simplify it to the extent that you didn't have to go to great lengths for, for people to understand what's going on because again for me the most important thing is to understand or observe how these very few people 
depending on their opinions on specific decisions, even depending on their mood uh, dur during a day, can make decisions that affect the lives of thousands of, or millions of people. And that felt that, that something universal and, and timeless, and, and that's what we wanted to explore. So it was, it was fairly easy for us to focus on the things that mattered uh, regarding the film and the story we were trying to say. There's a question here. Uh, Gerard Bush, VPRO Cinema. Question to Emma. Is the rivalry in Hollywood anything like that at Queen Anne's Court? Sorry? I think oh, the mic's on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell, yeah. But there must be some rivalry, right? What? There must be some rivalry. Um, I don't know if it's rivalry. There's definitely a competitive spirit, but I think that that exists in probably most industries. Um, but, you know, that this is a new question because I hadn't ever thought of the kind of uh, analogy of, of this being like the film industry in any way until yesterday when someone asked me a, a similar question. And so I, I'm just now starting to think about the associations. I don't have a, a good answer yet. Um, but yeah. Helen? Uh, hi, Helen Barlow from Australia. Hi. Um, Olivia, um, you're playing two, two queens. You're about to be in Netflix's The Crown, which we're all waiting for with bated breath. So what is it that, um, how is this happening, two queens in one year? And, um, and Nicholas and Joe, I kind of think you're playing women in this uh, film as well, aren't you? I particularly like your look, Nicholas. Where did it, did you have any input? And who's the designer? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Nick wants to answer the Queen question. It was fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, and just, I just want to give you a, a visual of how tall are you? Six foot. Six two. Six two with heels and a, a, a foot and a half of wig. So it was. <laughs> it meant none of us could look at him while we were acting because it was just too funny. Um, the qu two queens in a year. Yes, they're not very similar. Um, <laughs> So that's good. Uh, and uh, yes, the, we've started filming on The Crown and I'm having a lovely time. So I, I, yes, I hope I don't let you down <laughs> when it comes out. Um, uh, yes, and the two queens, I can't really compare. Um, the, yes, I don't think Queen Elizabeth learned anything from Queen Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was a lot of fun running around in wigs and high heels and fancy costumes. It's every man's dream. It was great. <laughs> there. Hello. Hello. I'm here. Yeah. I really love the movie and um, I just wanted to know, um, since it's so elegant, if, how, uh, and if you took inspiration from a Parmigianino self-portrait painting with the Miro, and how the idea came with the grand angle, uh, maybe it was uh, because the reality inside the palace and outside is really distorted. Uh, I really love this uh, sort of idea of grand angling. Thank you. Yes. Um, Yes, so, um, well, the, the way you film something, I guess, firstly depends on your personal um, tastes and um, um, views on, you know, how something feels right, and it's very instinctive. Um, and uh, I've been anyway um, experimenting and using more and more wide-angle lenses and a specific way of filming in my in, in my latest films. Um, and I, I guess I felt that this was an appropriate film to go even more extreme, possibly because of the of the reasons that you just mentioned. Um, that it was imp it was important for me to show the the contradiction visually as well um, between these relatively lone figures in these huge spaces, those few people, like I said before, that are making decisions that affect 
million others and the lives of others. Um, so that kind of juxtaposition of the small figure within the grand distorted spaces uh, felt uh, right for this film. Um, and I guess it, it's not common to see period films filmed this way, um, but at the same time it just felt appropriate, uh, period appropriate. Again, because as you mentioned, there, there are paintings of even earlier centuries with convex mirrors on the walls that you see the distorted spaces. So it, it, at the same time, it felt contemporary and appropriately period. There. Where is Ian? Yeah. Hello. Uh, this is Yanis from Greece. Congratulations to all of you uh, for the beautiful film. My question is quite obvious. It has to do with Yorgos. Uh, in a previous festival, I don't remember where, in Cannes maybe, I asked you, again in a press conference, if you are uh, willing to come back to Greece to film a, a film. And you said probably yes. Uh, I want to uh, ask you again <laughs> today <laughs> what's new. And maybe you could, I know that you don't like comparisons, but I would like you to compare um, you working uh, in a foreign country and you working in Greece. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think you've asked me more than once that question, <laughs> in more than one <laughs> festival. <laughs> and the, the answer changes from festival to festival um, and from film to film. Um, but my answer for the moment remains, if, if I find uh, the story that, that I want to tell that must be in the Greek language or takes place in, in the Greek landscape, I, I'll gladly go back uh, and make a film there. Um, uh, and the other thing, oh, the, 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 the difference. Um, well, the, the more I work outside Greece, you know, the, the, more, the more Greek I feel, I have to say. Um, uh, because obviously, People with different culture, different mentality, uh, work in different ways. Um, and I guess I'm even more of a particular case because of the way we started making films in Greece, which, which, which were basically dependent on friendships and uh, the generosity of, of, of people around us, people that were making films just for the joy of making films, and they were ba basically paying for them themselves, the people who worked on the films or worked for free or for very little money and they loaned us their, their clothes, their cars, their houses in order to film in. So obviously it's a long way from that into making a, a British period film in London. Um, so s some of the some of the things, I'm not saying that that's the best way to do films, the way we made them in Greece, but it was the only way. But some of the things that I learned um, from making films there, I find it hard to maintain them in, in a much more structured and, and professional environment. Uh, the spontaneity and the, and the generosity, I, 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 I struggle to, to find. Um, but again, because I've experienced a very different extreme um, environment. Uh, having said all that, of course, it doesn't make sense for me um, to be working the same way I worked when I started. Um, and I, I do have more means to make the films that I want to make uh, by working outside Greece and in a different language. So obviously, that's why I'm doing it, and that's why I intend to keep doing it uh, for the moment. Um, and um, sorry for the long answer. <laughs> there. Hi, Yorgos, here. Uh, the production design of the film is great. Could you please tell a few words about your work with Fiona Crombie, please? please. Yes. Um, well, so mo most of the locations we, we, we used were real locations. Um, so what, I guess what we try to do is um, move most of the stuff out because after all these years, uh, all these places have um, are full of stuff from different periods and 
Um, they, they seem quite heavy. Um, the other reason for that, that was like with every other um, element of the film, what we were trying to do was focus mostly on, on these three women um, uh, and making the spaces uh, quite em empty and relatively simple um, helped to achieve that goal. Um, and um, I guess that's about it. I mean, we, it, it's, it's a film which is quite contained. It takes place in only a few spaces. Um, but uh, um, I guess the way we filmed them, we filmed them um, kind of um, contradicts and at the same time enhances the, the claustrophobic feeling of them. Yes. Hello, Gerard Bush from VPRO Cinema again. Uh, this time for uh, Yorgos. Uh, it cannot be a comment or a reflection on hashtag Me Too because it started like nine years ago, this project, but uh, so much for women as victims in this film. Do you mind that it could be seen as a reflection on has hashtag Me Too? Uh, of course, I, I don't mind, uh, but obviously we can't take credit for something like that because, as you said, uh, it did start many years ago. Um, I think that the, the positive aspect of this film is that um, it does, again, focus on, on, on three female characters, which is rare, but what we try to do is portray them as human beings. Um, because most of the time, obviously, because of the prevalent male gaze in cinema, women are mostly portrayed as housewives or girlfriends or um, um, uh, objects of desire. Uh, so I guess the, the positive aspect of this film is that uh, we tried in our contribution, <laughs> if I can say something like that, our small contribution is that we are just try to show them as complex and complicated and wor wonderful and horrific they are, uh, like every other human being. Kalimera, uh, Eli Mastoru from Belgium. Hi. Uh, I have, first of all, thank you for this film and for the laughs. And I have a question for Yorgos. I know you don't like to elaborate and explain your movies, but could you just just hint at what you wanted to do with the last image where uh, Emma Stone and Olivia's image intertwines with the rabbits? And maybe is there something there between animals and people? And, you know, thank you. Um. Well, there is something between animal and people, obviously. Um, I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, I guess I'm, I'm generally, I don't know if this answers your question. I'm not sure I even if there was one or if I understood it correctly, but um, I guess what I'm interested in with animals, I find that we have a very weird relationship with animals. and. You know, there are those that we make friends, that we love, there are those that we kill in order to eat, there are those that can be killed at a certain period in time, but not others, in certain countries, but not in others. Um, so it's, I, I, I find it quite a, a strange, baffling relationship that we, that we have. Um, uh, so I guess I'm interested in, in, in seeing them interact humans and animals. I, I have a question for, for Olivia and, and Emma. The relationship between these two characters is so explosive and so at whim, you know, it, 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 keep, it keeps moving around. I was wondering if you two, what, how did you establish that relationship within, you know, within the, within the film? So. <laughs> <laughs> Just in terms of our really, uh, yeah, in terms of our is, relationship. It's, it's, to yeah, each and other. it's a little bit about process uh, because it, because it's so fascinating because it keeps like you don't expect what's happening, but but obviously you know you you work together, you train, you prepare. So I'm just curious how you how you created that dynamic that appears to be yeah. Well, we didn't, but the writer did, and yes, and we did what it said on the script. Yeah, and and what Yorgos told us to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, and also, I mean, we had we had this three-week rehearsal process before um, we started shooting, and that and it wasn't like a traditional rehearsal. It wasn't, yeah. you know, a blocking experience. But mm -hmm. Tony was there, Yorgos was there, obviously, yeah. and then the whole cast was together for three weeks, and we did a whole bunch of crazy stuff it's, yeah, theater <laughs> together. Games. And so we all really learned to be embarrassed in front of each other and rely on each other. And I, I think by the time we were shooting, we all felt very, very close and very comfortable, too. So when I had to, you know, <laughs> have sex with Kali, with Olivia, it was very comfortable. Because <laughs> we were very good friends. Yeah. <laughs> A natural next step. You know. A natural <laughs> next step. <laughs> we didn't really. But okay, I, anyway. with this, I have to close because they, they carried me for time. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much.